Hey everybody, welcome to Why Buy. Let's talk about the RS3. If I had to describe the RS3, I would describe it as a very spicy Jetta. It's because it's still the same MQB platform, um, uh, just with a dramatically more powerful engine and drivetrain. The RS3 is Audi's entry-level RS car, and it, it all comes to context of what you consider expensive. I suppose in the context of expensive sports cars, it really is not that expensive. I mean, I believe the MSRP on this car was around $68,000. And for the performance you get, it's outstanding. Like my first car ever, um, that would have been a 2001 Toyota Echo in gold color. Um, no complaints about that. Actually, I would like I'd like to own that car again. To be honest, <laughs> it's just so fuel efficient, and gas prices these days for a daily driver would be just fantastic. For fun cars, um, see, it's complicated because like I did have a lot of fun with. Uh, uh, I bought a 2004. Pontiac Grand Prix after the Echo and I guess that was kind of my first entry into modifying vehicles because that's when I kind of did the stereotypical uh, MagnaFlow exhaust with the Euro headlights and taillights and stuff like that but I guess when I actually started really getting into the car scene would have been more with the uh, Volkswagen Golf GTI that I had. The reason why I liked the Golf GTI would have been, um, I guess, one of my childhood memories. Because uh, at one point, one of my uncles must have recently purchased, I would have guessed, a Mark IV GTI. And he took me for a ride in it, and that would have been my first experience with turbocharged engines. And I just remember that noise of acceleration and I guess it just imprinted in my mind that eventually I wanted to buy a Volkswagen Golf GTI. Um, well I guess the rationale behind picking the RS3 specifically over say the TTRS was at the time I was in a long-term relationship and I wanted to I guess future-proof the fun car from having kids and I guess it's easier to justify a four-door sedan than it is a two-door coupe. The RS3 ended up taking the GTI's place. Um, it was kind of a funny story. I didn't really actually intend on buying the RS3. Um, I kind of just wanted to see what it's about because in 2018 it was kind of the new product. Um, there was kind of whispers in the MQB local chats about it, how awesome it's supposed to be. And I decided to reach out to Southgate Audi to see if 
they would allow me to test drive one. On the test drive, I was actually really surprised by um, the car salesman who was taking the test drive with me because he let me um, drive it very fast and encouraged me to do so um, because he actually insisted that I do a zero to 100 run and a zero to 100 back down to zero run, which really ended up selling me on the vehicle in the at the end of it. And uh, that'll always kind of be imprinted in my mind because that was the first time where um, deceleration actually gave me tunnel vision. And I couldn't believe that that actually occurred. <laughs> Because the first time stepping into Southgate Audi, this car was actually sitting there in the showroom because we were actually shopping for an SUV. Seeing that in the showroom, I just couldn't frankly believe that an Audi would come in such a vibrant color. And at the time, I had never heard of Audi exclusive. So it was always about this car specifically. It was a substantial amount of money even for me, um, so I had to really think hard about if it was even possible, frankly. Um, and then if it was, like, how challenging it would be to actually make the payments on that. Honestly, uh, there, there was very, like, there, there was no justification for why it was a smart decision. It was, frankly, a dumb decision. I, uh, I actually tell people quite often that that was the best dumb decision I've ever made, or best worst decision I've ever made is actually the wording I use, um, because honestly it's not easy, but just every day driving that car, it, it just brings a level of happiness that I just, yeah, it's hard to put into words I suppose. The things that stuck out for me when I sat in the RS3 um, was I really liked how um, almost simple the layout was. Um, and then shortly after I kind of uh, owning it, I realized kind of how clunky the uh, cup holder is. And then I thought it was kind of quirky how it has such beautiful seats and then they were still manual seats. I vaguely remember someone trying to tell me that it was due to weight savings, uh, which seems a bit odd to me, but I know some other owners complained about the comfort of the seats on long drives, but I've traveled to Banff and Calgary in them on longer road trips and I haven't had an issue. The design of the seats I think is frankly amazing. Um, I really like the kind of quilted, perforated uh, leather, um, the Napa leather in particular, feels very nice, soft to the touch. Um, normal leather now feels like fake leather to me, so it's kind of ruined leather seats. Um, the steering wheel feels really good. Um, it's Napa leather and Alcantara. Um, it has a square bottom on it. Um, the button layout feels really natural to me. Um, my only gripe with that would be it is not a heated steering wheel, so in the winter, still daily driving it, um, it's kind of a feature that I miss from other vehicles. Um, the gauge cluster is another feature that kind of really stood out to me. I thought the virtual cockpit was really amazing at the time, um, particularly uh, the navigation. Um, it uses Google Earth images, I believe. Um, so it looks really cool. Well, I've already owned the car now for quite a few years, and I guess the tech doesn't feel dated to me. Um, which probably goes to say that Audi designs things rather well in that respect. Um, the only thing perhaps I didn't like was just the way to operate the MMI is a little clunky with the little touchpad. But beyond that, it's really good. In fact, even saying that, that the touchpad is kind of clunky, um, I, c I guess it kind of, the saving grace of that is now you don't have a touch screen that's getting smudged and gross. And I've seen some pretty horrible touch screens that get worn out and braided away and look dirty and gross. So um, the fit and finish compared to other vehicles is obviously quite a bit better. 
than my past experiences, um, even versus the Volkswagen, it feels a little more um, solid, a little more, um, everything's a little bit quieter, um, don't hear as much road noise, um, but comparing it to like a cheaper brand like a Hyundai, it is night and day difference. Um, the fuel efficiency is actually one of the things that surprised me about this car. When the car is so powerful, quite often I get eight to seven liters per hundred kilometers. The personality of the car, if it wasn't this color, I would say would be um, kind of subtle. Um, almost imagine, I guess, a businessman with uh, a wild nightlife, I guess. I was to personify it. Going from comfort to dynamic, it completely changes the tone of the vehicle. Like the vehicle has a valved exhaust. Um, we can change the exhaust note immediately. Driving it, it feels, I guess, like a regular vehicle, um, but driving it a little bit faster around corners, it still feels secure, planted. Um, at least in my limited experience. Um, I mean, I haven't actually tracked the car around a road course, but it feels good to me. The car being a dual clutch, it, it does shift dramatically faster. Um, it's a fantastic transmission, um, though admittedly I do miss driving a manual transmission at times. Just it feels more, a little bit more engaging um, but if you wish to go fast, the dual clutch is certainly one of the fastest transmissions on the market. I remember back when I first was looking into it, I think the transmission in this car was one of the fastest shifting transmissions on the planet at the time. Um, well, this would be my first Audi product, so it would be my first experience with uh, uh, Audi's all-wheel drive. Um, and I guess I would consider it almost dangerous just because of how confident, how confidence-inspiring it is, especially in the winter. Um, you feel almost invincible with the proper winter tires when you're even on um, black ice roads, you can drive the speed limit still. Every year I try to attend at least a couple car shows, um, one of the more notable ones being uh, Driven. participating since about 2019. Um, previously I always felt like my car was never quite good enough to get into the show so I never tried applying and then once I upgraded I decided that I would give it a shot and I got accepted. So My friend Ed here, he's got the 370Z just over in the corner there. He usually wins Driven actually for best in show Nissan. I guess one of my favorite cars here every year is the Lotus Elise that's just in the corner there. Lotus has always been one of my favorite cars and it's in one of my favorite colors, so. Um, I just really like seeing what everyone does, you know? Especially being here for a few years, you can see certain people's builds evolve, get better, improve, little things that they change over the years. Um, and then it's just nice seeing like unique things, not just exotic supercars per se. It's custom. Um, yeah, for the most part, the car culture here has been um, pretty healthy, at least in my experience. Um, like I've made a few friends over the years, just over Instagram, chatting, you know, um, answering questions for each other, asking questions. 
So I'm running um, Unitronics Stage 2 um, software, both um, DSG and ECU. Um, so that's paired with the integrated engineering's intake, uh, the Unitronics 4-inch turbo inlet, uh, Catalyst downpipe, AWE switch path exhaust, um, and then some minor mods like a ECE uh, dog bone mount for the transmission, uh, racing line subframe mounts to stiffen it up a bit more. So I was cherry picking mods and um, some of those mods were actually installed by the dealership. I guess because um, having so many RS3 friends, I already know what the car is capable of. And I just wanted to start, I guess, preparing the car for eventually um, flashing it. I wanted to have all the supporting mods to be able to do it, even though I didn't have the software to actually make use of the extra airflow and Year three, I think, started off with the AWE switch path exhaust, um, which is really actually quite nice because it still retains the um, stock valve controllers to be able to make it quieter or louder whenever you want, which is a very handy feature. Um, and then I think in the summer, um, my friends finally peer pressured me into uh, finally flashing the car, so I ended up getting a downpipe, I think with my tax return, <laughs> and uh, finally enjoying the power that it was sh really should have been making from the factory. Another show that I attended this year would have been the River City Motors show. kind of a nice show because it's uh, like a charity event um, and then you know it was kind of nice because it was smaller it was outdoor show um, has stuff for kids kids to do um, had a mobile dyno set up there so that was fun Preparing for the dyno, there was actually no preparation because I had no intention of actually going on the dyno. That was kind of a impulsive decision that was encouraged by some of my friends as well. So just, I guess, check to make sure that your oil is at the correct level and hope for the best. <laughs> For performance gains, I was hoping to see exactly what was really advertised on uh, Unitronics website. And after um, dynoing it, I think I'm quite pleased with the wheel horsepower numbers that I'm getting on uh, stage 294. I believe the numbers were um, about 494. Um, horsepower and I believe the torque numbers were about the same and the extra power is actually very usable um, it didn't certainly didn't make it any more clunky to drive um, the only uh, difference that I noticed was at very very low speeds that it it's almost jerky um, in first gear when you're just trying to creep forward it just wants to go much faster than that the problem, the problem with me now is like now I've now had uh, stage two 94 power for the whole summer now and I'm used to it again so I'm gonna have to do something about that. 
I do, I do think calling it almost an addiction would be fair because, you know, there's always more to have. There's always more on the table, you know, like the, the, there's a very, uh, there's a very high um, modification ceiling on these cars. Like in the States, I know that there's guys running, you know, seven second quarter miles now with these cars. So the sky's really the limit on these. I, I can't speak on uh, personal experiences, I guess, um, in terms of reliability for like the GTI versus the RS3, just simply because both cars actually for me were, um, I didn't, I didn't have any issues with either of those vehicles. Um, as for maintenance, I do do the maintenance more regularly, but they've also been free with the Audi care that I've gotten. Um, so I can't really comment on maintenance costs because they haven't been paying for it. Um, and I guess the only thing that I did have to do was get new tires because um, it actually wore out the inner the inner tread of the front wheels um, to the point where it was uh, developed a hole um, which after after that incident um, and talking to um, a mechanic at River City I believe that these um, MQB cars actually have a tendency to wear out the inner inner treads much faster even even when they're in the correct specification for um, alignment. Fortunately though I am lucky I believe it was 2019 year um, for whatever reason they chewed up brake pads faster um, like I know one local owner who had to change his like fairly fairly early um, like I want to say 20,000 kilometers while uh, my brakes are still um, stock but I'm sitting at almost 45,000 kilometers um, another thing to be aware of, particularly in Canada, is our fuel is worse. Um, so it's kind of recommended to uh, fuel up with 94 octane. And something I do myself is once you're on uh, stage 2 94 with Unitronics, I actually added um, about 5 liters of E85 just to uh, help fix some of the timing issues with the inferior Canadian fuel. Um, it is an Audi exclusive color. That's probably one of the most frequent questions I get is whether or not that's um, a wrap. And if it's not a wrap, then they ask me who painted it, but it's actually factory paint. Um, and the paint code's actually, uh, um, it's just Porsche 2D8 is the color code. And it's literally just called green in German. It's literally just grun in German. Like you look up Porsche 2D8 and it'll, it'll say just grun, just green in German. It's like, okay. At the dealership, they were calling it RS green. Um, and I guess in some of the Audi brochures, I did spot that RS green um, wording, but it's just Porsche 2D8, just green. Well, the favorite thing about this car um, I think would be quite obvious, which is the uh, inline five uh, engine that powers it. Probably one of the nicest sounding engines on the planet. When I launched the car, it's actually quite a lot of fun because it just feels so uh, violent. <laughs> and then frankly, I think uh, Audi probably tones it down a little bit so it doesn't embarrass the more expensive RS vehicles right out of the factory. But it makes it very easy to get more power out of with very minimal mods. I guess that's where I'm gonna sound 
a bit insane because like I didn't really shop for anything else. It was a bit spontaneous for me. I do like, I think I got very lucky, um, like with this car in particular, just because like Audi exclusive, um, is typically something that you got to wait months and months for to get allocated and each dealership I believe is actually limited on the number of exclusives they're able to order so just the fact that there was one sitting in the showroom at the right time was probably very lucky it's just not something I guess you would expect an Audi to be if you thought this video was helpful please like and subscribe show your support and thanks for watching Welcome to Why Buy. Uh, yeah. uh, sorry, I thought it was done, damn it. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. Show your. Uh, oh, I don't know why that was so hard. Okay, well. Because, um, like, like, I don't know, it's weird because, like, when, when it's just me and you having a conversation, I find it super easy to talk, but when it's, like, staring at the camera, then it's like. <clears throat> if you thought this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. Show your support, and thanks for watching. I should have made that vodka. Should just have like a like your your face in front of the lens, like just like one of those, just your face. So I can still talk to your face, but I'm just I'm talking to the camera. That's it. Hooray! I think I think that was a little bit smoother than the first one, the first few I should say.